Africa. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the video where we uh, we went Couple through. Come up, how are you? And, Good evening. Yeah. Yes. Good evening. Well, send it to you later. <laughs> Sorry, we were finishing a conversation. <laughs> Welcome, Rabbi. Good to see you. Hi, hi. Thank you. Okay. All right. Looks like we're doing bad here. In uh, seventy one, I know. So uh, the tour said like this. We read this already. Even if he has somebody to do it for him, right? What are we talking about? Burial, right? Uh, nevertheless, he's still considered to be a part of it, so he's absolved. <clears throat> So he says that applies only, only on weekdays. But when it comes to Shabbat Yom Tov, Hayab is obligated to read. So why is that? Because there's no morning on Shabbat Yom Tov. So since there's no morning, you can't do burial. So there's nothing to do, you know. <laughs> so why not read it? Who uh, Midatanya? That's what it says in the Brayta. Perk Elo Migalchin, right in Moed Katan. Says, a person who has a dead body there, his relative, uh, uh, right? so he doesn't do Birkat uh, Amazon and Zimun. Why is that? Because until he does the burial, uh, he's absolved from all the mitzvot. Right? What do we call that before the burial? It's called Onen, right? So Onen is absolved from all the mitzvot until he does the burial. So he's patu from Kiyat Shema, Tfilah, absolved from all these things. And all the mitzvot that are in the Torah is, is absolved, every, every mitzvah. But he says, but when it comes to Shabbat, but on Shabbat he can, uh, he can do everything, right? There's no morning on Shabbat. So therefore, you should eat meat and everything, all the stuff, as normal. Uh, so he goes on. And he's obligating all the mitzvot in the Torah. The Katab Sham Rosh says the Rosh there. Uh, Rashi Piresh. Rashi explains Masechet Brachot in Brachot Yud Zayin Amud Bet. Eno Mevarech doesn't bless. Eno Tzarich Lebarech. That means he doesn't need to bless. Mashma Shaim Ratzalevarech, so implies that if he wants to, to bless, he can do if he wants to. But he says in the Gemara, it's not much like that. Doesn't doesn't it's not implied like that. Gemara, because it says there, Chutz Le'arba Amot Dami Asu, Al Ma Dish B'Davar Isu. So you see from the Gemara. That there's a prohibition in this, not just it's optional. So he says, um, some say that that which it's implied there that it's forbidden, uh, right? That uh, 
That means that uh, he has to deal with the burial, you know, um, obligation. But in Kvara Sak, but if he already did it, or he has somebody else to do it for him, and then he could bless. It's not implied like that. The Garcinan, because where the the Gil says there, the text says, "Hatam eno ochel kol tzorcho veno ochel basar." He doesn't need this. Doesn't need that. The acherim shebelchu eno onei acherim. So he says also the others that blessed. He doesn't even answer them. Right? He can't even say amen. Amen. Uvaniat amen eno mitzpatel mitzorchi amet. Uh, so even to answer Amen, he shouldn't do because he's not obligated to burial for burial. Rafilu Hachi says, nevertheless, Asur, it's forbidden. Beod Amina Mepek Mishemeto. Also, we say in Yutzeta Mudanif, Enamet Mutalif Nehem Hem Yoshvim. If the dead is not there, the dead body, so they just sit. The Korean uh, they read, and who Yoshev Bedomem, and who he sits in quiet. He's not doing uh, the needs of the dead. The Katane uh, teaches that he sits quietly, silently. So he says, if he's able to uh, concentrate on the first verse, uh, and still he doesn't read. So therefore it seems that he's forbidden to do so, not just uh, it's optional. Okay, so, the Ken Mashma Yerushami, that's also how it's applied. Yerushami, the Garcina that we have, we see there, Hatam Tane Im Ratzal Yachamir Atzmo. So if he wants to be stringent, right, and do all these mitzvot, and Shomimlo, we don't allow him. Too bad. Why? Because of the honor of the dead. So what does that mean? You're taking care of his needs, you know? That's the honor. <clears throat> he doesn't have somebody to, to carry him out, right, in the funeral procession. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to tell me it's because of honor... Of the met of the dead, asu, it's going to be forbidden. If you're going to tell me it's because nobody, there's nobody to carry him, so that would mean that if he has somebody to carry him, uh, then he will be obligated. But it says in the Brayta, but it says in Brayta that he's uh, absolved from taking lulav. Uh, so he says uh, that um, Let's talk about Chol Amoed. V'atanya patu mitkiat shofar. But it also said he's absolved also from shofar. My Yitlach Lenama. So we're going to tell me, V'chol belo bayom. You're going to tell me only it's weekdays, but not the day. The Yom Tov. Amar Rabbi Chanina, Mechelan Shehu Zakuk Le'achashich Al-Atchum. So this Rabbi answers, since he's obligated to be there on the border of the town, like to bury him, whatever, De'avi lo Aron T'b'chachachim. To bring him uh, a uh, coffin and shrouds, Kemisha no semas odame. So it's considered to be like he's actually carrying him right now. Miu, Miu, Palik, but says, however, this he argues, Yushami Gimara Didan. The Yushami argues on Agimara, the Mashma Hatam, because over there it implies the Afilo Beshabbat, even on Shabbat, because you're allowed to go to the border and sit there and wait, Leavilo Aron, to bring him uh, the coffin, tachachin, and the shrouds, the chala alav avelu. So therefore, at that point, uh, the, uh, the the mourning does take effect on him. Uh, and here we say, the Shabbat chayav, that here we say on Shabbat is obligated. Bechol mitzvot ha'murot b'torah. And all mitzvot are in Torah. Behu adin b'yom tov. Same thing also applies to yom tov. Uh, so they said, right, that our Gemara is talking about in the morning. And they're just talking about the evening. Because there it's relevant to say that they're waiting 
on the border, because otherwise in the morning, why would he want to wait there? There's no point. But over Shachrit, and not with Shachrit, but Nini Reh, so it seems to me, he says that lo kashya, there's no problem. Uh, the Vadai Bechol, that for sure, right, um, Yom Tov, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, not Yom Tov, weekdays, Shachol Asot Tzorchi Ahmed, that he's able to do the needs of the dead at that time, even though he's not uh, now right now doing. Yesh alav din aninut. So he has din of aninut, right? Which means that he's called onen. Because of the honor of the dead. Sheher libo panui. That his heart should be, right? Uh, how do you want to say it, right? You should be paying attention to that. For the needs of the dead. Yechashov. Uh, and think about them tamid uh, always about the Shabbat when it comes to Shabbat Yom Tov you can't do nothing for the dead right? there's nothing you can do on Shabbat just to go and wait on the border but that's only relevant towards the end so therefore only at that time you know when it's getting dark then he's patur but all day he's obligated and that which is teaches that he's absolved, he'd catch a far from shofar. I know b'shat shehu machashich. That's only at the time where he's actually on the border there waiting. But dishna mash ma'achi. So he says the language implies like that. Mechavan shehu zakuk lechashich. Since he is, um, uh, he needs to to wait there. Mash ma b'shat shehu asuk lechashich implies that when he's actually doing that. But when it comes to the second day of Yom Tov, so the rule is, you know, on the second day of Yom Tov, even the Jews can bury him. Just like on a weekday, Shaviu, Rabbanan, uh, then, then the rabbis made like a weekday. And therefore you have the din of Aninut. But the first day of Yom Tov, so he says, on Yom Tov, the first day of Yom Tov, you have one option, right? You can have the Goyim to do the burial if you want to do that. You can't do it yourself. But since he has to supply them with all the, you know, uh, the coffin and the shrouds, the log gara mi machashich al tamhom. So therefore, it says it seems like it's not any less when somebody is waiting on the border. The avilo, I don't to bring that to the uh, coffin. Hakim the shroud, patur. Therefore, it's patur. I can't know. That's the end of it. When Rabbeinu Satan Devarav Kedat Arosh, so he says the tour passing like the rosh here. Mashkat Tov the Shabbat the Yom Tov Hayab. And that which he said that on Shabbat Yom Tov he's obligated ad ad ha erev until the evening. That he's able to wait on the border there, as we said, and to, to, to deal with the needs of the burial. Hainal Omar means to say that that if he's doing it towards the evening, waiting on the border, then he's, then he's really absolved. But if he's not really there at night, on the border, let Erev Nami Chayab, then he's uh, obligated. This is even though the simple meaning of the tour, uh, doesn't seem like that's the way you explain it. Rather, um, that even though he's not on the, on the border, but since he's able to do that, in theory, theoretically, patur, then he's absolved. The kisvat yeshomrim, like the opinion uh, of the yeshomrim, she is kira rosh, like the rosh mentioned. Meperk mishe meto ketava, gamken. He also wrote this in the perk mishe meto, which is in brachot. Velo uh, nechelak alia, and he didn't argue with that. But gam rabbeinu yona ketava, he also wrote this. Sham mikol rabbeinu yona. But it says it seems like he wants to pass connect the rosh, pek, uh, the conclusion of the rosh, the pek ve'elu migalchim over there in Moed uh, Katan. Shehu itkar makom. That's the main place. Dinze of this place. 
רזדן. נראה שמזה הטעם לא הזכיר בפרק מי שמתו. So it seems like what? Because of this reason he says that he didn't mention this gemar on Misha Beto, but he mazim din zeh over here, shekivan shem bakom shehu ikar makom adin, because it seems like the place where the, the main place there is there, of this halacha, katav svarato, he wrote his opinion there, lo chalishin on the mash katav perk Misha Beto. So therefore we're not really concerned about what he wrote over here in brachot, sheeno ikar, because that's not the ikar makomo, it's not the main place. Yod shareh rabbenu patu yoreh dea, So it's also, he it says, the Rabbeinu, the Torah, and your idea, Siman Shin Mem Aleph, over there, laws of mourning, Katab, or Shabbat, or Yom Tov, or Chel Basar, or Shabbat Yom He says, in Shabbat Yom Tov, you can eat meat and drink wine. And he also blesses, and he's chayab, all mitzvot. He's obligated to do all the mitzvot. Says, if he needs to wait on the border, he says, Kedel La'asok B'Tzorchei Amet, In order to do the needs of the dead, um, so then uh, he has the din of onen, to be forbidden all these things, the time where it goes out to the border. So as if we were explaining his words, like the simple meaning, so then there will be a contradiction between one place and the other that he wrote about this. Hilkach says, therefore, We have to explain, uh, that, like, we, like I wrote, and here he wrote, at, at, uh, he shortly, he wrote short, uh, briefly, he was brief, right? Uh, yeah. And there, right, uh, he wrote more at length about this. And... Uh, That's the main place. And because of this reason, he says he also, you know, he was, he wrote in, with brevity here as well. In that place about Yom Tov and Shabbat. But uh, he didn't make any differentiation between Yom Tov, Rishon, Rishon, and Shani. Between Yom Tov, first with Yom Tov, then Yom Tov, the second day. He didn't differentiate. Because it's not the main place over here. Yom Tov, Rishon, at small, And the first day of Yom Tov, Ben Im Rotzel Kavro, or Babayom, Babayom, if he wants to bury him, whatever he wants to bury him during the first day, I mean, by, by way of Goim, Ben Im Rotzel Kavro, or he doesn't want to do that, Babayom, that day. So he relied on what he wrote over there in Tu Yordea, uh, right, that he wrote over there all kinds of differentiation and details and so forth and so on. Okay, we have Shalomar. So it's possible to say, uh, that since it's not relevant to say regarding Yom Tov and Shabbat during, towards the evening, Patur is, Patur is obligated, except, uh, except the, the other mitzvot, because at that time, it's not time to get Kiyachimah. is at night. And here you're talking about like, uh, you know, before sunset. The the morning Kiyachma, he already said, he already did that before. The time already passed. And for the, for the night, it doesn't, the time didn't come yet. So therefore, you really shouldn't have written the issue of Kiyachma. Uh, Rather, only on weekdays, Ababa Shabbat, you should just written like this. Only that's only reliable, that only applies to weekdays. But on Shabbat, the Yom Tov and Yom Tov, Chayav is obligated, Elad the Mishun, the Lolin Mod Mikan. But in order that we shouldn't learn from here, the whole Mitzvot, the whole Mitzvot, Shachayav Behem, call Yom Tov, call Yom, Shabbat, that is liable to all Shabbat, Yom Tov and Yom Tov. Apilu Meshat She, She Machashi Chalat Hum, even at the time where he's waiting on the border. Uh, so therefore he wrote uh, that he's obligated all day and he only, since he only wrote here um, whatever he needs for 
לא חשש דברי דבריו, so therefore he didn't go into the details, וסמך על מה שכתב בטור, יודע, because he relied on what he wrote over there, שהוא עיקר את מקומו, because that's the main place. So what's over there? Over there it's talking about the laws of mourning, right? We're not, this is not the main place over here. So he didn't go into all the, all the details. Okay, very good. So we're going to do uh, Shukhanuch. But... Hey, Kabbalah, I have a question. Sure. You mentioned that um, when the person is in charge of the burial and, the, and you know, what the disease needs, correct? And then you said about caring. Does it mean the person also that carry the coffin and the ones who are in charge of the burial, are they exempt from these mitzvot and the and the places where you just mentioned that, you know, second day of Yom Tov, excuse me, Yom Tov, Shabbat, uh, and so on? So we're going to see in the Shulchan Ruch uh, exactly what, you know, we're going to read it right now and we'll go over the whole thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So uh, let me just see if I can find this. We're going to go through the whole gamut there. So it says in Shulchan Aruch, Bamed by Morin. When was that said? Bechol, right? That's talking about weekdays. Ava be Shabbat chayav kol hayom ad ha'erev, right? So, but on Shabbat, he's liable all day because, as we said, right? Uh, you can't do burial on Shabbat, so there's nothing to worry about. You can't really honor the dead on Shabbat. There's nothing to do. Im machashich al adchum. So it says, uh, uh, if he's, but in the evening, when he goes out there, you know, on, on the border to wait there. Today, by the way, we don't do this, you know. This concept doesn't exist today. Going to the border, you know, of the town. Well, nobody does this today because everything is in town. Uh, so it's not really relevant. Uh, so what does that mean? That we don't really have this. So therefore, he'll be absorbed all day. But if he's not there at the border, as we said, like we are not, right? We're not there. So then he's also be obligated in the, in the evening as well. So basically on Shabbat, right? He's obligated to do everything. That's that's pretty much the story. So it says, what about the second day of Yom Tov? So there, it's like it's like a weekday. Why? Because the rabbis allowed you to bury your dead on, on the second day of Yom Tov. So therefore, right, there's no limitations there, relatively speaking. What about the first day in Yom Tov? If you want to bury him by way of Goim, so then it's like a weekday for you, because you're going to be doing it, right? If he doesn't want to bury him, um, that day, so then it's like Shabbat. So what does that mean? Most people right today, obviously, will not bury anybody on Yom Tov. You know what I mean? By the way, even on Yom Tov Sheni, we don't do today. It's not it's very rare. Nobody, nobody does it. Even though technically speaking, it's allowed. You know? The reason why they don't do it, by the way, is because uh, it's going to cause people to drive over there, you know, with their cars and stuff. And so they're going to be breaking the, you know, the holiday like that. In those days, there was no cars, there was no issue like that. Today, everybody comes with a car, you know? So, can't really do these kinds of things today. Uh, so, therefore, right, the rule is today, I mean, it's pretty much nobody does burial on Yom Tov. 
you know, uh, they do it on weekdays only. So therefore, if it, you know, if the person dies on Shabbat or Yom Tov, they just like guard the body until the, the day after, and then they do the burial afterwards. Okay, so that's that. But just to write to recap what we said with Aleph, I don't know if we did it last time, but let me just recap that. So in Aleph we said, Misha met lo met shehu chayav litabel ba'olav. If a person, somebody died, right, and he's obligated to 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 mourn for him. So uh, who are you obligated to mourn for, right? There's five people, you know, that you're obligated to mourn. Parents, your son, right, father and mother. Uh -huh. Son and daughter. Right. Children, you know, and then what? Uh, your husband. Brother and sister. Sister and brother, right. So you have five altogether. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So these are the five categories that a person has to mourn for them. Uh, so, um, that means that if you're in this category, God forbid, you're going to be mourning, so therefore, right, you're going to be absolved. Even though he's not really doing the burial, right, that Hebra Kadisha is doing the burial, but nevertheless, since it's your responsibility, in a sense, so you're absolved from these things. So, so why is that? Because, you know, even though there are other people who are doing the burial, but still, you know, there's things to do, you know? So you're very, you know, uh, you're very distracted and you've got things to do. So therefore, the rabbis absolved you here. No, uh, in any case. Right? Uh, but if you're not obligated to mourn for this person, you know what I mean? Uh, some other relative, let's say it's your cousin, whatever, right? So you, you're not, you're, that doesn't absolve you. Because, uh, you know, he's not, you're not responsible to bury him. It's not, it's not your responsibility. And it's not really, you know, it's, there's nothing there for you. So you have to say, Kiachima. So it says, we said, right, that if you want, if you want Machmir, you're not, you're not allowed to be Machmir. So then he goes on, but if he has somebody to do it for him, and he wants to be a machmir, so then we, we allow him, you know, that's how we allow, because he does have, you know, somebody to do the job. So he is absolved on the one hand. If he wants to be machmir, we allow him to be machmir. So I hope that answers your question, right? Does, is that good? <laughs> Did we take care of it? Well, I was confused between the um, taking care of the burial and carrying the coffin. So I guess, yes, yes, it answered because you said that if uh, someone does the burial for you, even, I guess, you know, besides the preparatives and burying the dead, then he might be absolved. He's right? absolved. He's absolved if, uh, you know, if, he's, uh, five if he's one of the five relatives. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so you know, in a sense, right, the convert is lucky because they don't have this problem. They don't really, you know, much, much of these problems. So, you know, they're pretty, except, you know, with the, God forbid, you know, the children, whatever. If they, if they have, if they have Jewish children, so there will they'll, they'll be an issue there. But, you know, the parents, they're not obligated to, to mourn for them, really, you know, or, or the siblings as well. So, the, the, you know, they don't really have, they don't really have much of this. Okay, very good. So that's the story there. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll go to Gimel. So here's another issue, right? Which is that it says, Hamshamer right? Hamet, If you're guarding the dead, 
even though it's not your relative, you're still absolved, right? Because you are in charge of guarding him. Would this include if you were on the Hever Kadisha? It doesn't really matter. That's not the issue. The issue is that you're guarding him. Uh, you know, these you know what these people are doing, right? They're sitting there, you know, reading Tehilim and stuff, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I know that we'd never leave yeah. the dead alone. Right. Somebody always has to be there guarding, you know. So it, is that on the Hever Kadisha Society that do that does that? I'm sorry? Usually someone from Hever Kadisha that does that though. Yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be anybody. Yeah, today you're right. That's the way it is. But, uh, you know, in those days, uh, it was like a free-for-all, you know, like whoever wants to do it, does it, whatever, you know. They also had a Hebra Kiddush in those days. They had some places they had. You know, uh, every town had their own arrangement. I remember, you know, I said, I have like this vivid memory when I was a kid, you know, in yeshiva, like we were, I was, I don't know, 21, 22 years old, whatever, you know, like learning in yeshiva, in Chafetz Chaim over here. So I had a, you know, we had a friend there who was learning there, and he had a grandmother, you know, and um, she died, passed away, you know, and she had nobody to bury her. It seems like there was no family, nothing, no children, God knows, right, whatever. So we went, you know, and we, we did it. <laughs> We actually, we actually, you know, like physically, you know, did did, did a part of the burial. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's a mitzvah to, you know, to do burial. So we got that mitzvah also, you know. I took that shovel, you know, and shoveled in that uh, dirt. <laughs> and it was at night, you know, it was pretty spooky. We we're in the graveyard at night. It was pretty spooky, you know. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, it's quite quite an experience. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. We did all kinds of other things. It's like uh, you know, today it's like a, it's a rare mitzvah today, you know, to do this kind of thing. Nobody does it today. It's all done for you, everything, you know. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's see the Bet Yosef. It says Bet Yosef, Brayta Bresh Pek Mishemeto. Um. It's a bright over there uh, in the Brachot Yud Chet Amud Aleph. The Katav Aran says Aran Pek Yeshen Shafa Pi Shehu Yachol Lekai Mitzvata Beodo Mishma Mish Meshamel. So he says, even though he's able to do the mitzvah when he's guarding the dead. In other words, why why can't he just say Kiyat Shema? You know, sit there, guard the dead, and say Kiyat Shema. Why can't he do that? Right? Apparently, it should be no problem. But too, but he's absolved anyway. Can you imagine, right? So what's, why, is he, why is he absolved? Because if you're doing the work of God, you know, the work of the Lord, right? As they say, right? Uh, so then the Torah doesn't absolve you to do other mitzvot. You know what I mean? You're doing one mitzvah. Right? There's, a, there's a rule like this in Halakha, you know? If you're doing one mitzvah, you're absolved from a different mitzvah, right? That's the thing isn't over that, here, the whole point. Is it also a thing that we don't do mitzvot in front of the dead because they can no longer? Ah, <laughs> yeah, but the truth is, you know, here you're obligated, you know, so, you know what I mean? That's not exactly the same thing. You wouldn't do shema in front of, like, when you're in front of a dead body. Uh, right, but, I mean, the, the truth is, you know, if you're obligated to do it, you know, I mean, what's more important, you know, to honor the dead or to honor God? You know what I mean? So there you have no choice. Uh, you know, unless you can do it later, so you can wait, no problem, you know. One more question, and is the Jewish person who is watching over the body also um, involved in the loss of uh, impurity in here, because it's close to a dead body? Or no? Uh, yeah, so today we're all impure, you know, so there's really nothing to worry about. So we don't, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yes. We, there's no way for us to get purified. Okay. okay. So we're stuck. Okay, thank you. We don't have to go to the mikvah afterwards, no? I'm sorry? We don't have to go to the mikvah afterwards. No, but you, you have to wash your hands uh, with a cup, okay. you know? Yes. Take a yes. cup and 
like you do in the morning, you know? Uh -huh. Is, is this according to custom that you have to do it outside before you go into your house? Uh, what, the... Letila? Ah. Uh, when you go back from the burial, if you go to the burial, you know? Well, you should do it right away. In other words, once you leave the, the, the cemetery, you know? Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yes, thank you. Yeah. I remember the last time I was there, you know, at the cemetery, uh, I noticed that they have like a station for that, you know, like a washing station. Okay. So it's like far off, you know, from the burial places, you know, it's like a little bit distance. So I guess maybe it's not considered to be part of the cemetery. I don't know exactly how that works. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, okay. something like that. Okay. Hotel, right? They had it inside where the, outside the bathrooms. I'm sorry? The old hell they had it outside the bathrooms okay yeah yeah right exactly yeah okay very good <laughs> all right good <clears throat> okay so let's go on so it says right um So it says the rule is that when you're digging a, a grave for the dead, right, you're absolved. <laughs> so even though the people who are usually doing burial, right, after they, um, after they, you know, they get tired, they rest. Even though nowadays, uh, as we said, right, that people are, you know, not really involved in this so much, but nevertheless, uh, so it's a, you can do the mitzvah. I mean, nevertheless, right, uh, he's absolved. Interesting. So what it means to say is like this, right? You can take a rest, you would think, right? No, let me take a rest. You know, I'll take a break because, you know, it's hard to dig. Digging is not easy. <laughs> so uh, it's a tough job. So, uh, you know, I'll take a rest and I'll say it then. You're still absolved until you finish, you know? Until you're done. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, so says Modina Vadai Shakol Shenot Sarik Litroach Klal, like a Darko, the Mitzvah Rishona, Yahol at Set Yedeshin Yahu, Kay Gavna, Vadai at Set Yehomstein. Right, so but it does say, right, another issue here, another point he makes, which has to be made, by the way, which is that if you can easily do the other mitzvah, even though you're doing one mitzvah, you should do the other one too. In other words, if it's not so hard for you to do both same time, you know, you can chew gum and walk at the same time, right? Remember that, uh, that joke? Right, so why not do both of them, you know? What's the problem? Uh, so there is a concept like that. The truth is, we find in the Talmud that they're arguing about this, you know? We already, we already passed that one time. We discussed that. That in Talmud, there's one opinion that says, if you can do the other one, you should do the other one too. But there's one opinion that says, even if you can do the other one, you're still absolved. <clears throat> so here he says, right, if you can do easily the other one as well, you should do, why not? <clears throat> it's easy for you. Okay, so then he goes on. But it's according to Tosfot, Verosh and the Rosh, Sham, Hecha, Shev, Shalo, Lekayim, Shtenitzot. So he says like this, oh, right, there you go, right? According to Tosfot and Rosh, what are they Paskin? If you can do both at the same time, you have to do both of them. That's what they say, right? So if you can chew gum and walk at the same time, you should, right? Why not? Do both Nitzot. What do you got to lose? <clears throat> okay, very good. So let's see the uh, 
شوخان روم خير As we said, right, Hamshamet Hamet, Afilu Enom Metop Patu, right? If he's guarding the dead, even though it's not his dead, right? It's not his relative, he's still Patur, he's doing a mitzvah right now. By the way, do you know why the dead need to be guarded? What's the reason for that? So demons do not yeah, possess or something yeah. like that? Yeah, because what happens is that. Once the neshama leaves the body, it gets attacked by, you know, all kinds of uh, bad forces, mm -hmm. you know, the body. So, you know, we try to guard it from that. So it shouldn't be attacked. So what do we do? We, re we read Tehillim, you know, uh, so this, this uh, removes, right? This uh, removes all the bad spirits from there. So what does this uh, guy do? Rabbi, do, uh, do Jews perform exorcisms? <laughs> oh boy oh boy <laughs> oh my god oh you surprised me there oh how you doing david no answer okay anyway so the the answer is that uh there is such a thing like that in judaism it's a kabbalistic kind of thing you know uh so the, the the reason is like this the reason why they have to do this is because what happens is that there are some people who die and um because of their sins uh they're they, they, they don't have a place to rest their neshama you know the soul uh because so what happens is it just the neshama hovers around you know hovers around can't find a place to rest. Is that what a divok is? Right, that's a divok, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, there's whole stories about that. But anyway, right, uh, so this person can't find a place to rest. So what happens is that sometimes he finds like some kind of soul, you know, in this world to cling on to. So he clings on to him, you know, some person. So he gets like, you know, he gets possessed by that by that soul and so they have to remove that soul from him from clinging to him you know so there's like a procedure that they do to remove it <laughs> yeah you want to try that david you interested <laughs> well i don't know it you know i have a feeling it may happen to me can i count on you to uh... <laughs> Okay, no comment on that one. Okay, it's gonna cost you, David. It's gonna cost you. It won't be for free. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> that doesn't mean do bad things and then just you know at the end you just pay money for it, David. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you're good. You're good. You. <laughs> No, this is really uh, something unusual, you know, this whole thing. It's a very unusual kind of thing. Shoshana, I know you had a sense of humor somewhere. <laughs> it's buried deep, deep. So, yeah, so uh, there is actually such a thing like that. Um, it just, you know, brings up some memories because when I was in Israel, they actually had a famous case like this. Where some woman, you know, like, you know, came and she claimed that she was possessed. By some, you know, some nisham, some soul. So say she came, she came to this kabbalist, you know. His name was Rabbi David Batsri, you know, and she came and, you know, uh, that you know, and they heard some kind of a soul like talking out of her, you know, some voice of a man, you know. I'm not sure. Maybe she was a ventriloquist. You know, talking, talk, talking about money. Once I told a priest that Jews are allowed to buy their way into heaven. And he was outraged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> well, you taught me that, tzedakah. If you give enough to tzedakah, you can actually buy your- Yeah, it's true. When you give money, there's money has a lot of power. Yeah. You know why that is? Because, you know, your money is hard earned, you know. So you you worked for that money. So it's like it's a, it's like your blood, you know. Like you 
you gave your life for that. Mm. So, yeah. So, you know, it's like it's hard earned money. So it has a lot of value. It has a lot of uh, significance. But anyway, <laughs> getting back to right the, back to Earth, right? As we said. So the funny thing is, right, that uh, apparently in the end, you know, it turned out that this lady was a fake. You know, she was faking it. <laughs> so this. <laughs> she must have been. She must have been Georgian. <laughs> she was. But uh, anyway, so this, from what I heard, you know, this rabbi admitted in the end that it was the whole thing was a fake. It was a, it was staged. You know, she staged it. Don't I don't know. Like, like, don't ask. <laughs> so yeah, so there are things like this, all kinds of things, you know. Uh, you know. But the truth is, it's it's the person who uh, what do you call it? The person who sinned is the one that he's hovering around. You know what I mean? He's the big sinner there. But the person who's also clung to him is also, he did some kind of a sin. There's no question about that. This is what happened also to Shaul, you know, uh, the King Shaul, Shaul Amelech. If you read the story in the, in the Bible, you see what, what, what happened there. He also was possessed by a spirit. It's exactly, that, that wasn't a fake, that was a real one. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so you know what they say, right? That the only way the spirit will come out of him is if David will come, you know, with his uh, with his fiddle and play, you know, the violin, you know, he would play music, so the, the happiness would get get the spirit out of him, you know. That was that was the only thing that worked. So he had to hear, you know, the, the David f playing the fiddle, King David. That was, that was before he became king. <laughs> okay. So, so it's depression is, is a symptom of possession in a way? Uh, no, no, not really. No, that's two different things. Okay. Uh, uh, when a person gets possessed, it's, he doesn't get depressed. He gets like really like, you know, crazy, like, you know, like abnormal. He gets, you know, a person is like possessed, you know what I mean? Like, like he's, he's haunted, you know, he's, he's you know, it's a very abnormal situation. Uh, but a person who's depressed, it just, be, just means that, uh, you know, he's, he's lacking faith in Hashem. That's, that's the thing. You know, he, he tells, uh, why do I get all the bad breaks? You know, everything bad happens to me, you know. He's down and out, down on his like, you know. No. That's something else. That's not, that's not possession. Okay. So... As we said, right? Uh, that's the story there. So we'll go to Dalid. So in four, right? It says like this in tour. Let's say there was two people, right, who were guarding the dead there. In other words, I guess they're doing like picking turns, right? They have shifts, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, so one can guard and the other one can read Kiyachima, right? So this way they can both do it. You know, they take turns. So if you have, if you have a relief guardian there, right, somebody can relieve you, you can say Kiyachima, no problem. Okay, let's go on. So it says, Brighta Perk Misha Meto. Right, that's where is that? It's a Brighta. And Yud Chet Amud Aleph in Brachot. Hayush Daim Zeh Mishamer Bezeh Kore. Let's say there were two of them, right? And one was guarding and one was reading. As we said, one guards and one reads. There's two of them. Bezeh Mishamer Bezeh Kore. And then they take turns, right? To go take a ship. They, they, they go round robin. The Tane too, Brabraita is also teaching the Brabraita. Benazai Omer says Benazai, Hayu Baim Besfina. They were coming in a ship, right? Whatever boat. Menicho Bezavit Zo Mitpalin Shnehem Bezavit Achad. They they leave the body on one on one side, and they pray on the other side of the ship. The boat, whatever it is. 
ואמינא על מגימן, regarding this they say in the Gemara, מאי בנאיו, so what's the, what's the difference? אמר אבינא חוששים לעכברים, איכא בנאיו, so he says, the, the difference is that are, you, are we concerned about, you know, mice? In other words, when you're guarding the dead, you're also guarding them from mice, because they can come and, you know, nibble at him. You know, because once the soul leaves, the mice aren't afraid anymore of the, of the, of the human. So they can come and take nibble, nibble him, you know, whatever, right? Whatever. Uh, Rashi explains, the first opinion is worried about mice, even in a boat. So it implies that the halacha is like the first opinion. So it says, because of this, the poskim didn't differentiate uh, between a boat and another place. So they're all the same. Okay, very good. So we're going to see Shulchan Ruch on this. Dalid. So it says, right, Hayu if two people were guarding the dead, as, as we said, right, one guards and the one reads, and then you take turns, right, the other way, right? Then the other one guards and the other one reads. Okay, very simple stuff, very simple, very straightforward. <clears throat> Good. We have a little bit more time, so maybe we can do one or two more. So he says, Also, he says, if you're if you're digging a grave uh, for the dead, you're absolved. It's a bright in uh, this perk, uh, which is you dal and bed and brachot. It's explained there. If there was two of them, as we said, one buries and one, one reads, one digs and one reads, the low and Rabbeinu didn't need to write this, right? It's the same concept as before, as we had before. So he says, because uh, really, right, the, the, the custom was the two people used to guard. Right, so we learn it from there. It's the same concept as that. Right, the person is doing digging a uh, right the grave there. He's digging into the wall, a cell of the, of the rock. Because he's taking out the dirt from there. But he says in our graves that we bury like you know on top, right uh, on the surface of the ground. It's like deep, like a little pit. Uh, one needs to dig and put the dirt into the right, into the uh, box. And then one person above to remove that box with the dirt. Also, two or three people can do it in one shot together, right? In unison. So if they need to get do it together, they're absolved. That's what says on the Raman, Tadam over there in his book. And the Rabbin writes in the tour this halacha, your day asiman shin samichi over there, laws of mourning. If there's like one or two extra people there, they can read the Kriyat Shema because they don't, they're not needed. And then they start working, you know, to, to dig the grave. So what happens like this, right? If you have a few extra guys there, Let's say you have a team working, you know, like four or five guys. So two can work, you know, and two can go and read and then take turns, you know, round robin. This way they can all read, not a problem. So if you have some extra manpower, right, you can uh, work that out very well, no problem. So he's going to say. Okay, very good. Let's see the Shulchan Ruch and we're done. Right, Vav and Zayn. Hey and Vav, I'm sorry. So it says, If you're digging a grave, you're absolved for, from Kiyat Shema. Right? Uh, that's one thing. Now we're going to go to Vav.
זאת אומרת, היו בית יותר חופרים, או כל הצריכים לצורכי החפירה בבת אחת פטורים. So he says, if there's uh, two, two or more, right? So therefore, right, there's extra people there. Uh, so, uh, so, I'm sorry. So if there's two only, right, they're absolved. Why? Because they need two people at the same time for burial, for, for, for not the burial, the, uh, the digging. But if there's extra people, more than two, so they do round robin, they each one reads, right? Because they have extra people there. They have extra manpower. Okay, very good. That was above. So let me see how long this one is. Yeah, it's short, so I guess we'll just finish it off. It's one more chapter here. So it says like this. Right? So this is what you said, right, Shoshana? She said that um, you're not allowed to read in the, in the, in the cemetery, right? Uh, or within four amot of the dead, right? One or the other. So what does that mean? In order to solve the problem, right, of, of you know, not disrespecting the dead, what he's telling you is very simple, right? Just go four amot away and you're good from the dead body, right? Once you distance yourself for Amot, but, the, but the, the, the graveyard, right, the cemetery is considered to be like all one big for Amot, you know, so you can't really go anywhere there. You know, like as long as you're within the perimeter of the cemetery, you got a problem. So you would have to go out of the, you know, outside. Like you have to leave the, leave the, the, the fenced in area there, you know? Once you leave the fenced in area, you're good. You can read there over there. That would, that would be how you would solve, solve your uh, problem there. So, uh, yeah, so um, it says in the Beit Yosef regarding that, the Perk Mashuach Milchama, right? And over there in this Perk, Sota Yimim Gila Mubet, Kiyat Aravdimi Amar Av Yochran Met Tofes Arba Amot Ikrat Kiyat Shema. Right, so it says over here, this rabbi, when it comes to a dead body, right, uh, regarding the issue of reading Kiyat Shema and, you know, reading Torah, it's only four amot, right? That's once you go out of four amot, which is you know um, two meters, right? That's it. You're good. Uh, you can read. In this parak over there, you've got the mudalef. Kamar dehu adin. Same thing also applies. The betach brought also in the cemetery. So it says it applies from the Rambam. If he read on the side of the dead, or in the cemetery, he should read it again afterwards because he didn't fulfill his obligation there. He did it the wrong way. So Ravad over there argued with him, right? As usual, right? As you know, he likes to argue with the Rambam. So as we pass like the Rambam, he says. Okay, interesting. So we'll do the Shulchan Ruch here and we're done. Whole chapter is finished. So it says here like this, right? Asur likrot kiyat shema. You know how to create kiyat shema? Toch arba amot shel met. Within four amot of the dead. Or bevet akvarot. Or in the cemetery, right? One. Ve'in kara lo yatsa. So according to Rambam, right, as we said, right? If he read it, he didn't fulfill his obligation. So he has to read again. So the rabbis took away his mitzvah because he did it in a disrespectful way. Okay, very good. We're done. So Bezat Hashem, next time we'll do uh, 72. Thanks for coming tonight. Be blessed with wealth, health, happiness, all the good things. You should see only good things, Bezat Hashem. No, no bad things. Only good news, only smachot, uh, only joy. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. And happy. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye.